Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, I'm currently being assaulted by drones, so if you do hear a lot of gunshots in the distance, that'll be why. But no, what we're looking at is another utility ship that's great for being able to get up to large buildings, up to mountain sides to be able to repair up the buildings, or to mine up ore patches that are just out of reach with your jetpack without needing to use your jetpack. So if you are in a world or as the creator put, have friends that don't like to use the jetpack too often, or have restrictive mods in place where you can't really use the jetpack as much as you would usually do, then this is going to be the vehicle for you. So this right next to me is called the Stratus, which is basically a mobile platform for, well, a bunch of people to stand on, one person will drive it, you'll go all the way up to the structure, and then once you're in place, you simply leave it hovering there, and I'll do your work. You can then just maneuver around wherever you want to have it, or wherever the people currently welding stuff up, want you to move it to, and well I think I'll just grab hold my character and show you with trail for bad. So at the front here we've got ourselves a lovely little platform, a lovely glass platform, a bunch of seats around there for your passengers to actually go sit down on, make sure if you are driving around at high speeds and they're not going to just wander off or go flying, come crashing down to the floor and die. Now we get into the seat, now lift it all the way off the ground, and in first passing view this is what we get. So on the top left hand corner what you can see we've got the ham script, I'm not going to go through that, but what that is, if you do not know what it is, is what allows you to set up custom pathing all the way back to your base. So once you're done with this vehicle, you can then hit a special button, activate it, and then it will go automatically all the way back to wherever you set the destination to be, and even dock itself up if you set that up. It's a very handy thing to have, but once again, I'm not going to go through it in this video. So yes, up to here, I've got a poor little space station currently on its side. I had to attach guns on the top there because I kept getting drones spawned in this world, for whatever reason, and then we're going to drive all the way up to this section, say this is where I wanted to have the repair work done, and I'm going to come all the way up to it. There we go, I can even come into the top mount camera so I can get a better look at what's going on. Here there are plenty of people standing on the platform blocking a view in the first person regular cockpit view. And then we're all the way up to this, can't move forwards anymore, just going to realign it slightly, there we go, hopping out of that, hopping out of this, and here we are. We now just go over to grab our welder and start repairing this up, ah -de -da -de -da. get back into this, move it slightly up, there we go, over to here, pop out of this again, and repair up once again. Very handy thing to have, especially if you are in a jetpack limited world. Yes, we come all the way back down to the ground, we now press F10, find its spawn menu, it looks like the drone in the distance has been dealt with, means it is laying on the floor, and the guns have stopped shooting. Just gonna have it like so, that'll do quite nicely, just leave it hovering there slightly, bring the free camera all the way back over. There we go, press F10, Finally, in the spawn menu, the Stratus is 440 small blocks using a bunch of the DLC packs. We see a massive wall of text telling you all about the ship, as well as what it's made for and what it can do. So over here is where it says it was created for playing with friends who like to have the jetpacks turned off. And of course down here is all about the PAM scripts, but again we don't need to go through that. Moving down slightly, here's your specifications of the ships. So we've got our PCU, our block count, what it's got, so we've only got absolute thrusters on this, is powered by batteries. And of course we've got our ore detector on there, so we can go up to mountain size, like I said at the very start, and do a bit of mining by hand. And of course we've got objectors, so if we ever took damage, or even just a few bumps here and there from being a bit reckless when going up against the structure, we'll be able to see what is damaged and easily repair it up. There's also an action relay, a remote control block, and of course the two programmable blocks, which don't really need to go through because here they are right there. The automatic LCD screen script, and of course the PAM script. So giving this a thumbs up, move around towards the very front. Perhaps what I'm going to do is lift off the ground so we're nice and far away from that. There we go, that should do quite nicely, bit wonky, but that should do. And we're going to start over here, have a look around the outside, go through the controls, and just test out a bit more. And it looks like two more drones are incoming, or at least, yeah, there is two drones incoming. So hopefully the guns can deal with them, and not disturb the video. So for the very front of these Stratos, this is what we get. Well, as you can see, we've got our front platform, where it's got our four seats on there for your passengers to sit on. We've got three wheels at the front there, so when we come up against the structure, come up against the mountain and we're going a bit too fast, we'll just bump against them, not damage the main platform. we also got two spotlights, two interior lights to light up the area. Below them, we'll have even more spotlights, we'll take a look at that a bit later on, when I change it at night time, because it is a large spectacle of spotlights coming off this thing, which is quite amazing to see, and also very useful if you are building at night. Moving up slightly, coming all the way across, we've got some cargo tins for you to store a few bits and bobs inside, as well as a couple of weapon lockers for you to store some guns and ammunition if you want to do that. And just getting a better look over to here, here's your glass platform that comes all the way across to the main cockpit. It does not matter which way you get into the cockpit, doesn't matter if you come from the side, like over here, or even onto, well, above it, you'll always be plopped out on that platform, so there's no risk whatsoever for you randomly falling off, 
if you're unsure where you're going to come out the cockpit. Anyway, onto the side, past all of this, here we go. So we've got a bunch more wheels on the side, so if you are going to land down quite hard, hopefully these will absorb most of the impact. But there is a truss block, which is adding a small wall to contain all your chairs, lockers, and cargo containers, as well as a small strip of hazard skin that goes on either side of those wheels. All the way across this section, we've got a blue light. There's our cockpit to drive it around. There's two little barrels for you to once again store a few bits and bobs inside. An event suck an auction to make sure when you're driving this thing around, you're not going to suffocate, especially if you're on that planet with no oxygen. We've got another spotlight just facing towards the front. We've then got our searchlights, one on both sides, which we can access from the cockpit to use as a camera, and of course to redirect the light wherever you want it to be shined on. Up to there, some atmospheric thrusters help slow this thing down. Back to here, some to push you around left, right, and keep you off the ground. There's another little spotlight right there, right next to our connector. There's an order detector just sticking out the back there. Then all the way over here, here's your antenna, two more spotlights, even more atmospheric thrusters. Then all the way up onto this section, there's your action relay, two more spotlights to so act as your small little brake lights. And all the way up and above here, here's your warfare batteries, some neon troops going all the way along the top, another spotlight, there's a little access panel for you to open up, depending you're doing a bit of work on there. There's a rotating light which we can activate from the cockpit, there's your remote controller block, and then the conveyor cap is sitting on that access point on top of your cockpit, with a top mount camera right in front of it. And of course there's our cockpit, down to the front there, and there we are. Coming all the way down underneath this thing, here we go, so we've got magnetic plates to clamp this thing down on. We see a bunch of truss blocks, just adding a bit of decoration on there. Usually a lot of people would use unfinished blocks in this section, but no, thanks to those blocks being added to the game, we can now have completed blocks and still have the same look. Anyway, all the way across, there's some more truss blocks, all the way across, some more magnetic plates. There's a programmable block, there's a camera to help dock up this connector. Two more spotlights we can light up, which we'll see in just a moment. There's a push all detector, antenna, and rear amsuit thrusters. And there we go. So that's that for the outside, and for what it is and what you're going to be using it for, it does look fantastic, and I do absolutely love this front section. Original thought's going to be detachable, like a lot of ships tend to go for, maybe have merge blocks or a connector, so you can ultimately just change the tools, but no, this is an all-in-one ship. You just spawn in, build up, if that's what you need. But yes, what I'm going to do now is grab hold my character, come over to tab number one, here we go, or tab number two even, press number one, two, three, four, and I'm going to change it to nighttime. So over here, into this, and all the way to the darkest point of night, that'll do quite nicely, back into the free camera, and here we are, we're now just lit up like a Christmas tree. That will just lift it all the way from the ground there, there we go, and all the way up to here. See, so yes, pressing number one, we now turn the rotating light on the top, pressing number two, that's going to be fully light, just on these sides here, so it's very hard to see them. And press number three, that's going to be your big spotlights at the front. Then press number four, that's for your side spotlights, or the searchlights even. And of course we've got number five to turn them off. There we go. And of course if I turn off everything except the searchlights, there we go. Press number six, we see they're currently facing towards the front, sliding to the ground. Now what if I want to have them redirected over here? There we go, back into the free camera. And there we are, now showing the light over there, so we're doing work. And now we can see clearly what's going on, but I believe it's going to be better for me to just Grab hold of this, here we go, come out of that, come all the way up to the structure, and pretend I'm actually doing some work. So it might have actually taken damage, I might be able to actually do some repair work on this thing. Because as you saw there, when we got blasted at the very start, I did have to add a few more turrets on here to make sure it could protect me during this video. Now I'm going to come up to this, and I think I'll come all the way up to this section right here. Here we go, that'll do quite nicely. So let's say I'm doing some work over here, but I need it to be really lit up so I can see exactly what I'm doing. Press number six, rotating all the way around. I'm going to have it shone right there. Coming out here, onto the platform, and just put myself all the way down, my jetpack turned off, and there we go, and I see exactly what's going on here, nice big bright area, so I actually start preparing this up, and doing wire, maybe I'll just grind this away, and there we go. And of course in here we can store a few bits and pieces, so I put some tools inside here, drag this out, so if ever, for whatever reason, dropped it onto the ground, and that's all the way at the bottom there, I've now got a backup into this one, I just put a gun and some ammunition in there. Don't know why, because we do have the weapon lockers on each side. It's a just in the seat. Get carried away. And there we are. That. Anyway, putting back away from here. Turn off the searchlights. There we go. Put it on everything else. And I'm going to bring it back to the daytime. There we are. Now for the rest of these controls, we've got number 8 and number 9 for your order data and antenna. Over to tab number 1. Once again, we've got a PAM script. We're going to be able to control this section up to here. You might be able to make it out. It might get a bit too compressed thanks to YouTube. But number one, number two, we're going to be able to lift that up and down so we see what's going on. And of course, set up our custom pathing if we want to return back to base and dock up automatically. Once again, I'm not going to go through this. So that's all you're going to get on that section. Anyway, number four is for your connector below the chip, dock it up. Number five is for your magnetic plate, or they run the chip to actually clamp it down to make sure it doesn't wander off. 
Number 6 for that camera right next to our connector, so when it comes to docking it up, we're not going to risk damaging this thing, or damaging what we're trying to connect up to. Number 7 for your atmospheric thrusters all around the ship to turn them on and off. Number 8 for that top mounted camera above our cockpit so we get a clear view of what's going on in case the platform is covered up with a bunch of people. And then number 9 for your batteries to auto or recharge. On to number 2 we've gone through that, on to number 3 we've got action relay. Number 3 is for your gyroscopes to turn them on and off so now nice and stable, we can still move this thing around. I can't use my mouse to actually move it around. I suppose that is a very good safety dead. So you want to drive all the way up to this. I say we're going to level it out. Now we're going to turn that off. So your work is working on the platform. And now you want to move it around. But because you turn off the gyroscope, there's no risk of you randomly just flipping people off the platform, sending them flying. Because no matter how much I move the mouse, it's not going to move around. There is that. And of course, number five is so your objective to repair this ship up. Just project the entire ship. So if you ever took damage for whatever reason, say from a pesky drone, or crashing into a structure, you'll be able to see exactly where it's been damaged and where you can repair it up. And with that, that's it for the controls. So I suppose what we'll do is a quick little test flight to turn on the gyroscopes. There we go. I believe that'll be that for this video. So moving forwards, this is what we get. So not the fastest thing in the world, but we don't have to be because we are a utility vehicle. So it's not really going to be straying too far away from base. And as you can see there, our stopping speed is about the same as moving forwards. So as long as we're playing safe, moving slowly, and being very cautious about where we're going, there's no risk of this thing ever crashing. Moving left, and moving right because of the respectable speed with that. No one as fast as moving forwards or backwards, but still very good for moving this thing around, especially with gyroscopes are disabled. Moving up, should have a nice little speed with that. There we go. Very useful for carrying a lot of people, very useful if your car contains half a lub, with a bunch of resources needed to repair up whatever you're repairing. And of course, moving down is going to be gravity based. We've got no thrusters to help us out there, so that's going to be affected by whatever planet you have this on. Then, as for gyroscope controls, move this thing around. Plenty of control over this. So, yes, having that gyroscope turned off when people are on the platform is going to be a very good idea. Make sure, like I said, you don't just ping them around. And with that, that's it for the ship. That's it for the controls. So, the only thing left to do is to slam it into that structure. And we'll end it that way. It's not too much else to talk about. It's just a fantastic little vehicle to have in your world. A fantastic blueprint to have in your list of blueprints. You never know when you might need a ship like this, just spawn in and build up very easily if you are in a jetpack limited world. So here we go, charging towards the platform, making sure my ejector is turned on. Yes, it is. And here we go, third person view, hiding up all the HUDs. And in about three. Now, in fact, that's a bit too far away to do that. Here we go, three, two, one, straight into that section. And there we go, that was a nice big clonk. And it looks like we just lost our platform at the front there. So with the gyroscope, or even the projector turned on, it looks like the projector has been destroyed. But we simply lost our platform on the front, we lost all our side sections. But we can still fly this thing around, we move left, right, backwards, forwards, moving up and moving down. And we lost one of our batteries right there. How odd is that? How we just lost that battery in the middle there? Other than that, that's it for this vehicle. If we lean to the description below, do you download it and plan it yourself? Highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.